Welcome to lecture six of creating virtual worlds with Covice. I'm still Jürgen Schulz with UCSD. And uh, today we're going to talk about collaborative applications. Now, um, we've mentioned collaboration and collaborative modes in Covice before. Um, now we want to go a little bit more into detail. And there are really two levels of collaboration that we can do in Covice. One is collaborative maps where some of the modules are run on different systems. And then in OpenCover, we can run applications collaboratively where we have separate OpenCover instances running in various places in the world. Or maybe even in the same lab, but um, not in the same system. Distributed maps is the first topic where we can run some of the modules of a map on a different system. Now, um, what the advantages are of this is, are, is that we can use modules that may not be available on the local system. That can either be for licensing reasons, or it can be for architectural reasons, that the, the system that we're using does not, is not capable of running the code um, that was written for a different system. It can also be uh, used in order to utilize CPU resources more efficiently. That can be the case if there's a more powerful machine somewhere else that we want to uh, run part of the, the data pipeline on. Or it can be that there is a, a not a single po more powerful machine, but a whole cluster, a whole supercomputer, perhaps, um, that we want to run a portion of the computational load in our in our data map on. Uh, another another often or probably the most frequently used in our graphics world is the way that we would run our open cover render on the um, on a system where we have a Covice map, and then the open cover renderer would actually run on a different system, which is the display system, the, the cave system. So that's a way to use um, distributed maps by doing all the map, all the data flow on one computer, and then um, uh, sending the result to a renderer on a different system. Now I want to look a little bit more closely at how this works when modules run on different systems. This is an example for a local session where everything runs on the same system. We have a GUI, we have a controller, that's a Covice controller, it's a unit that, um, that manages the modules. And then we have a pool of modules where we have two in this case, module one and module two, and they're, they're coordinated by the, the CRB, the Covice Regress Request Broker. That's the, the entity that allows these modules to talk to each other and to exchange data with each other. Now in a distributed se session, we have also one GUI and one controller, but we have a pool of modules on the local system, and we have a pool of modules on the remote system. And you can see that here. We have a renderer module here, and we have a reader and a filter module there. Now, in this case, since it's a distributed sy system, we have two request brokers, these yellow um, uh, units here. These talk to each other over the network. That's how um, the data is being uh, exchanged between these systems when in the data flow diagram when one module talks to another. So that's the Covice request broker. Also the controller can talk to the modules from one uh, system and also the other system through the network. So that can all happen through the network and it can also often happen between heter heterogeneous systems that run on different um, flavors of Linux for instance. And uh, so you can, you can integrate a computer that's not only more powerful but perhaps even if your system is a 32-bit system, then that might be a 64-bit system, and, and that might even work. Now, um, in order to run a distributed session, what you would do is you would go in the map editor window. You would go to uh, the um, add host uh, item in the menu, and you would then get a window like this where you can see a list of available hosts that you've used in the past and put in this list. Um, or you can use your own new host that you can enter at the uh, uh, text box here. And once you've done that, then you'll get a, um, another window that allows you to set the various parameters for this host, which are um, the name of, of the machine, the username, and also um, a password for the username, and execution mode, which is listed here. Um, the execution mode is determines how your uh, local machine logs into this remote host. There are various execution modes 
uh, available. One is the R exec one, which is a deprecated method. It's rather old, um, but it's still there for, for historical reasons. Uh, it requires a username and a password, and it logs in very similar to Telnet. There's RSH, there's SSH, there's the, the NEC queuing system, which is useful if you have an NEC supercomputer. Um, there's remote uh, daemon, and there's a manual way to uh, connect to another computer by which is by running the CRB um, explicitly on that remote machine and then uh, giving your local machine the uh, the address of the CRB on this other machine and uh, this last method seems like it's a little cumbersome but it may be the only way to do it in case your firewall um, has uh, gives you some uh, headache when it comes to logging into the remote machine with any of the other methods now, once you've added the other host, you'll see in your list of modules that there's um, your own local host is still listed at the top. Um, but you'll also see this remote host. And you'll see a list of modules that are available on this remote host. And that's all listed in the module list of the map editor. Now, if you're going to use one of the modules that run on this remote system, then you can select it from this list where um, the remote uh, modules are located. And you drag it onto your map, and you'll see in a different color than you'll see this module show up, and you can connect it then to the other modules um, that run on your local machine. Now, if you um, open the module parameter window for any given module, you'll find uh, with different colors, you'll find the information about where this module is actually running. So if you see a blue color under the name of the module, then you know it's a local module. If it's a green one, then you know it's a remote module. And you can set and change the parameters in the remote of the remote module in just the same way as you change them for your local machine. Now, uh, in summary, this collaborative session um, uh, allows you to add modules that run on different machines. Um, you have a separate user interface for each collaborator. Um, each collaborator has their own renderer. You can actually um, have a collaborative session where the user at the other system also has a renderer, and you can look at the same data set on the desktop. And this is different than, than using OpenCover collaboratively, um, because uh, this is on the, on the uh, Covice map, the data flow um, level, not, not on the virtual reality renderer level. There's also a uh, chat window, which allows you to um, type messages into your, your Covice, and they are going to show up at the other end. So you don't need your own. Um, um, chat uh, tool. Now, if you have a collaborative session where multiple partners are involved, um, what will happen is that you have multiple GUIs, and you uh, are going to um, be able to connect these multiple map editors to one another. Um, in the uh, collaborative session, rather than the, the remote uh, rendering set or remote computing session, you'll have the option of interacting with the map uh, from multiple sites. So what we have here is in this example, we really have two collaborators, and then we have one additional remote host, which doesn't have a GUI. And they all are controlled by one controller, and they each have their own CRB for the data transfer. And um, if you are running a collaborative session where you send chat messages to your uh, collaborators, this is what your message area is going to look like. You'll see in color indicated where the messages come from. Um, and, um, and that way you can, you can talk to the other people. Now, as opposed to doing collaboration within the map editor, now I want to talk a little bit about uh, collaboration with open cover. So in this case, um, uh, when it comes to open cover, running open cover collaboratively, we have to run open cover at each of these collaborating sites individually. And instead of a CRB that uh, communicates with all these instances, um, we'll have a VRB for virtual reality request broker. And the VRB can, can be run from the command line just with the letters VRB. Uh, one of the sites of the collaborative session has to have a VRB. The other sites can then connect to that VRB, configure it in their Covice config file um, in order to uh, make the connection to it and, and make it a collaborative session. Once you're in collaborative mode, um, you'll find an avatar which indicates the position, location where these collaborators are in the virtual space. Um, this avatar consists of, of a set of glasses and a hand. Um, you'll see it uh, in a little bit. The, um, 
the, the data that you look at is typically not distributed at the startup of the, of the application, but you would distribute it offline. So if you have a large data set, you would copy it overnight, say, and then you can do your collaborative session because every site then will have this data set locally. Um, but you can still, as long as the data set doesn't change, you can still collaborate and look at this data set uh, from all the sites, and, you'll, and the system will keep it um, uh, in sync. This way of collaborating has low bandwidth requirements because the data gets transferred um, offline. And then when you're online, all you transfer is the position um, of the users, and you transfer the, the menu um, interaction that the users do so that you can synchronize that in case that's desired. Um, there's also uh, one, uh, another aspect that I mentioned in an earlier lecture, which is the tablet UI interface. If you run tablet UI on the command line of your system with Kovais installed, you'll find a um, window coming up which has a bunch of tabs which are for the various modules um, and plugins that you're running. And this uh, tablet UI interface can be run on a tablet PC. That's, why it w that's what it was originally developed for. And then you can bring that tablet PC into your uh, virtual environment to control certain parameters that are perhaps easier to control with a tablet PC rather than with the, um, the 3D input device in the, in the virtual environment. The tablet UI um, is actually really, uh, I would recommend that you look at that because it's very useful in many cases. It's easy to program. There's also sample code in the, um, um, there's sam uh, uh, sample code in the uh, Kovice installation that shows you how you can you write your own tablet UI entry. Now, when it comes to the uh, various modes of collaboration, there are three major collaboration modes. That there's loose coupling, tight coupling, and master-slave coupling. Now in loose coupling, what happens is that all the sites that, that participate in the collaborative session, um, they all uh, run at the same time. They're all, they're all linked in this collaborative mode. But every user can fly freely around the data set, manipulate the data independently from the other users. So you're independent of the others. Now, when you use the cooperative options menu, which, is, uh, which will show up in the main Kovais menu um, in open cover. You will uh, see this menu as soon as you link up multiple sites. When you click on tight coupling f while you're in loose coupling, what you'll notice is that all of a sudden, uh, depending on who clicks it, the other users, the other collaborators are going to be, uh, um, they're, they're going to sort of be switched to the same view that the person that clicks tight coupling has. And that means that your, your view, when you're one of the collaborators um, that haven't clicked tight, um, your view will all of a sudden change. And that'll be the view of the, of the, the master of this uh, collaboration. In tight coupling, as opposed to master-slave coupling, though, um, anyone who, who uh, uses the mouse from the moment on that you went into tight coupling um, is the, the one who determines the viewpoint. If multiple people fly around at the same time, they can locally fly around differently. But as soon as one of them um, gets, um, uh, lets go of the button, they'll switch back to the user that's still holding their button down. Now, um, since that's sometimes undesirable, but you really want to have a mode where one user is the master and everybody else is synchronized to that person, uh, that can be useful for presentations, for training, then you would go into master-slave mode where only this one person is going to have the, um, the power to uh, move the data set around. And this master mode um, can be transferred to the others if the master so desires. The avatar that I mentioned looks like this. It's a little, a little faint. But there's a, a 3D model of a set of stereo glasses up here, which is rendered exactly where the uh, uh, head tracker data is located. There's a hand, which is rendered where the wand is located at. And its, and its orientation is made so that it, it um, corresponds to the orientation of the, the, the pointer line at that site. And then there's a foot. Um, it's sort of a, it's a, a checkerboard grid at the, at the, on the ground that's always displayed just straight down from the head. And you can configure your own, your own um, uh, texture or image for it so that in a collaborative session, you can uh, distinguish the various collaborators by looking at their, f at their ground plane with the, um, with the uh, uh, image attached to it. 
The VRB that I mentioned looks like this. When you run VRB from the command line, you'll get this window. Uh, in this window, you can do you can click the various tabs to see statistical information about the network connection. Um, but you can't really do much in terms of um, um, visualization. There's there's no way to uh, set viewpoints to change collaboration modes in the VRB. That's not what it's there for. It's there to connect the various sites. There's a list on the left-hand side that lists all the sites that have connected to the session. And in order to make um, uh, to connect to someone else's VRB for a collaborative session, you will have to add these lines to the Covice config file. And the, the really the two values that you need are the IP address of the machine that the VRB runs on, and you need the port that the VRB is configured for. And if you have that and the firewall um, allows you through, you should be able to connect to that, um, to that server. And uh, all the other participants in the collaborative session need to do the same thing in order to be linked up for a collaborative session. This is a, a, a diagram of what that would look like. There's a VRB server, which can actually be the same machine as one of the collaborating sites, but it doesn't have to. Um, and then there are the participating sites that connect to the VRB. Now, if you want to have more information about the collaborative modes of Covice and OpenCover, then I would like to uh, refer you to this website. This is um, at the University of Cologne, where, which is another one of the major um, uh, Covice developer sites. And at this website, there is a Covice tutorial, um, online tutorial, which uh, includes under the advanced topics category this, um, the background for what we've discussed in lecture six. This concludes the course. And um, thank you very much for um, listening to it. And good luck with all your Covice programming efforts. Thanks. <laughs>